All right, Unit 8, Entomology, 8.1, Entomology Basics. All right, so the first thing we're looking at when we talk about forensic entomology, you have to understand what it is. Forensic entomology is the study of insects. Entomology is the study of insects. Forensic entomology is the studying of insects as it applies towards um, legal investigations. There are three areas of entomology. There's urban entomology, stored products entomology, and medical legal entomology, which is the forensic branch. Uh, urban entomology is just the studying of insects and how they uh, interact with humans. Um, stored products is how uh, insects infest food products, um, which for obvious reasons you understand that's probably a big area of, uh, of study with just the you know, commercialization of food products. And then the medical legal makes sense, and that's going to be our forensic study. So what is medical uh, medical legal entomology? Uh, it's dealing with necrophagus, carrion feeding insects. So necro means death. Um, phagus is, uh, comes from the root word that means to eat. So it is literally the eating of dead tissue and flesh. Um, and there's a big term here that you're going to want to know and that I will reference a lot, and that is post-mortem interval, also known as the PMI. We're going to be able to discover the PMI in multiple ways, and I will ask you to determine it in multiple ways, and then I will ask you to overlap it in multiple ways. So, for example, insects is one way to determine a post-mortem interval. Post-mortem meaning after death, so the amount of time since death occurred. You can do that with insects, you can do that with body temperature. We can do that when we talk about rigor mortis. Okay, the stiffening of the body. All right, we'll talk about all that. So a lot of different ways that we can get post-mortem interval. This is one of them. So a couple things. First, the order of events that follow death is predictable. We know the stage of, of decomposition, which we're going to talk about next week. Um, we know how a body breaks down. And we know relatively the pace it occurs at. Um, we know uh, also the specific process that organisms go through, specifically different uh, species of insect, um, as they go from an egg up to an adult. So that is a predictable series of events. Okay. All right, so insects on a body. Where do the insects go? Uh, well, they will go through any open orifice or wound. So they'll go through the eyes. They'll enter in the nose, the mouth. They'll go through ears, genital openings, and the anus. Okay. Also, any wounds on the body, and we're going to do an entire day just on wounds next week. Um, the different type of wound um, but, uh, will, will vary, but the fact is that an insect will colonize anything where there's a break in flesh. That's where they will uh, inhabit first. I tried to get some really gross pictures for you. I'll do my best. All right, so what is the most important specimen? The most important specimen is the oldest specimen that we collect on the body. Why is it the most important specimen? Well, it acts like a stopwatch that began the moment the organism died or the moment the first egg was laid. So if you can get the oldest organism, that's going to tell you the longest stretch of time, the longest period of uh, postmortem interval. Okay, if you get a really young, like say it's covered in, you know, pupae and you pick up an egg, well that's great, but that's not going to give you as much information as a pupae would, which is a later stage of development. All right. So when we calculate the postmortem interval, there's a couple things that we need to know. The the first is a life stage uh life cycle timetable. And we'll also need temperature data, and I'll explain why the temperature data is important. But when we look at the, uh, the life stage thing, mm, let's see this one. There. So this chart shows us the, um, the different stages. So you start as an egg, and what it's going to show us down here is it's saying at 70 degrees Fahrenheit to go from an egg to a first instar is going to take 23 hours. Going from first instar to second instar at 70 degrees will take 27 hours. Second instar to third instar, 22 hours, and so on, okay? 
Now, that's probably going to be worth noting off to the side, those terms I just used. Okay, so we have a term that is called first instar. Then we have second instar. And then we have third instar. And that's just referring to a, a larval stage. Okay, a larval stage of development. You get, uh, after that, you get a pupae. Pupa or pupae is plural. Okay, the pupa is going to be kind of the cocoon form of insect development, and then that will take however long, and then you'll eventually you'll get to an adult stage. Okay, so not only is the series, and this is important, not only is the sequence of this important, but we also know how long it takes. Now listen, there's an equation I'm going to show you next. The amount of time can vary if the temperature changes. Okay, so let's look at that. It is a term known as accumulated degree hours. Think about what that's telling you. Accumulated degree hours. What this means, we know studies of insects have proven that um, insects need a certain amount of thermal energy to reach the next stage. And so if, say, that the temperature is at 70 degrees, we know it will take 23 hours. Well, if the temperature goes up to 80 degrees, it is going to accelerate. The, the insect is getting more thermal energy, so it's going to advance much more quickly through its life cycle. If generally, uh, what the note I made there, generally speaking, if the temperature drops below 50 degrees, there's no development. So you could actually have a specimen that's been stuck at 46 degrees and hasn't developed in seven days. It's possible to do. So when we try to figure out the approximate time of death, the postmortem interval, it's equally important for us to get temperature data. Because if you know what the temperature was the last four or five days, that's going to definitely help you figure out how much energy these insects got, okay, and about how long um, they've been on the body. So here is our equation. ADH, accumulated degree hours equals the temperature times the hours. And that will tell you how many accumulated degree hours it got. So for example, let's say that I know that an insect need, or an organism, oh no, I have an example in the next slide actually. Hold on, let's jump to the next slide. There it is. So if it's known that a particular stage requires a total of 1,000 accumulated degree hours, we also know the ambient temperature was stable at its 70 degrees. Maybe this was an indoors. So we know that 1,000 accumulated degree hours equals 70 times an unknown amount of hours. This is just algebra. Okay. Thus, when you calculate that, you divide both sides by 70. 1,000 divided by 70, 70 is going to equal 14.29 hours. So our approximation would be 14.29 hours ago is when death occurred. Okay, does it make sense?